Blessed and everlasting Father, we thank you Lord for this wonderful word on how our Lord and Savior came back to life and the news spread throughout the land concerning his resurrection. Father, I pray that even as Jesus was raised to life, we ourselves too may lead a new life in him and serve him all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name. Death is one of the greatest mysteries in life. So far to this day, death has not spared anyone. As sure as we have been born, if the Lord tarries, we all will answer to death. Both good and bad people die. The sinner and the saint together, they die. Matter of fact, in Ecclesiastes chapter number 8, we have these words. Verse number 8. There is no man that has power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither has he power in the day of death. There is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. In other words, uh, death is the common mighty one. Death defeats all. The wisest king that ever lived, the wisest man that, are, that ever lived outside of uh, Jesus in the book of Proverbs chapter number 30 told us that uh, there are three things that are never satisfied. That there are four things that never say it is enough. Proverbs chapter number 30 and scripture verse number 15. The horse leech has two daughters crying give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied, yea, four, that never say it is enough. Verse 16, number one, the grave. The grave never says that I have taken in enough people. The barren woman, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. So as we sit here today, full of life, one day, one day, we will breathe our last breath, whether because of old age, whether it is because of sickness and disease, whether it is because of an accident, or whether we will smell some poisonous gas, one day we will breathe our last breath. Reminded of a scripture, you know, whether it is uh, 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 Psalm 150 or thereabout, that talks about this moment of death. Psalm, Psalm 100 and what? Talks about uh, in that day, Man breathes his last day, breath and that day he returns to the dust. But it's not bad news here today that I would like to bring to us. But it is just a reminder because indeed we live under the shadow of death. But in life we have an opportunity to live a life worth the sacrifice that was made for us. The death of Jesus was not strange. Because he died just like people die. He was not the first person to die. What is strange about the death of Jesus is why he died. The righteous for the wicked. Scripture tells us that scarcely for a righteous man, some would dare die. Romans chapter number 5. The apostle Paul in his uh, reasoning, he says... For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But what is strange about the death of Jesus is that he died, a righteous man, died for sinners. But God, verse 8, commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Jesus died for sinners. Again in chapter number 6 of Romans, we read scripture verse number 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. As Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. 
The resurrection of Jesus provides for us a reason to live new lives. A reason to leave sin behind and lead a life, a righteous life. As Christ was raised up, even so we ourselves should live a different life. We sing a song which is a challenge to our lives. We say, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. That there is a great change since I have been born again. Is there really a great change in your life? Are you living in newness of life? Are you a, is your life, are your actions, the way you respond to situations, does it show the value that Christ attached to your life, attached to you? He died for our sins. He was raised to life. He paid it all at Calvary for us. The wages of sin is death. We all had sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But Jesus, when he was put on that cross, all our sins were placed on him until he said, it is finished. In other words, the transaction of transferring his sins from each and every last one of us was finished. They were placed on him. He felt the weight and he said, My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Because our sins were placed on him and the whole place turned into darkness. From midday until 3 p.m. when the transaction was taking place. When your sins and my sins and the sins of all that had lived and all that were ever going to live were placed on this man Jesus. Through his death, the transaction was finished. And he died. He died for us. He took our place. The judgment that was ours was put on him. And he paid it all. He paid it all, I say. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, Apostle Paul, talking about Jesus and the gospel that we preach, 1 Corinthians 15 is, the chapter on resurrection it says, Moreover, brethren, I declared unto you the gospel which I preached, unto you which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins. Yes, he died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. They took him from that cross. Joseph of Arimathea, one of the Sanhedrin, they went and asked permission to take his body from the cross. And when the king heard that he was dead, he was surprised how quickly he had died. But he gave permission after having made inquiries that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. But that's not enough. It was not enough for people to hear that he had come back to life. He appeared. I say he appeared. He was seen of Peter. Then he was seen of the twelve. And after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once. Of whom at the writing of First Corinthians the apostle says... Of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some have fallen asleep. And that he was seen of James, and of all the apostles, and at last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Jesus died, he was buried. But on the third day, he came back to life, as we read in Matthew chapter number 28. He resurrected, he came back to life. God raised Jesus from the dead, not to die anymore. In Romans chapter number 1, we read under the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared, and declared, declared what? And declared the Son of God 
with power according to the spirit of holiness by what? By the resurrection from the dead. You know, sometimes we struggle asking ourselves, how is Jesus the son of God? Well, here we have a very simple but very key declaration that Jesus was declared the son of God with power according to the, res- the spirit of holiness by what? The resurrection from the dead. When Jesus rose from the dead, he was declared the son of God. Theologians can argue whether or not Jesus was a son of God before he was born or while he was here on earth, but there is something that we can never argue about. Jesus resurrected. He was declared son of God, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the truth among all nations for his name. For his name. Now, li- listen to that scripture. By whom we have received what? Grace and apostleship. Now, you need to understand this. An apostle is a representative. An apostle is one who is sent. Now, I know we, we get locked in the place where Jesus had only 12 apostles. And some even say apostles have ceased. Well, in a sense, that is true. But listen to me. An apostle is one who is sent to represent his master. And let me ask you a question. Is one of your callings to represent God? Eh? Does God expect you? Does God want you to represent him? You are awfully quiet. I say you are awfully quiet. Do you or do you not represent God? Are you supposed to or are you not supposed to represent God? So in that sense, we have received grace and what have we received? Apostleship for what? For obedience to what? To the faith where? Among all nations. Why? For his name. That's what we have received. When Jesus resurrected, when Jesus came to life, when Jesus was declared the son of God, he gave to us grace. Hallelujah. He gave to us grace. He gave to us apostleship for the purpose of obedience to the faith among all nations for his name's sake. Among whom are you also the called? Among whom also, we are the called of Jesus Christ. We have been called, brethren. You have been called. Don't wait to be called. Walk in your calling. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, sometimes I look at you looking at me and I wonder what is going through your mind. I say we have been called. You have been called. You are called by Jesus Christ. God wants you to represent him. God wants you to obey the faith among the nations. You are called. You have been given grace. I have been given grace. You have been given apostleship. You have been given the grace to represent God. We have been sent. Hallelujah. In John chapter 17, Jesus said, As you have sent me, also I send these ones. I send them, even as you, Father, have sent me. Don't you understand? We have been sent. We are people on a mission. Praise the name of the Lord our God. As Christ was raised up, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. We should live differently. Live for God. Live to God. Walk no more is in sin. Walk no more in disobedience. Serve the living God. Hallelujah. I'd like to say the resurrection of Jesus provides for us hope. It provides us with hope. Hope of life after death. Every last one of us has lost loved ones. I want to say it is not over. There will be also a resurrection from the dead. Jesus provides for us that assurance because scripture tells us that he is the first fruit of them that have slept. 1 Corinthians 15. If we can turn our Bibles there once again. Say 1 Corinthians 15. We'll read a 
number of scriptures and verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become what? The first fruits of them that slept. The harvest is still coming. Jesus is the first fruit of them that slept. For since, verse 21, by man came death, that is Adam, by man came also resurrection from the dead. Verse 22, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Wana Adam, Ufa, Wana Christo, Watafufuka, Wana Yesu Asifiwe. They that belong to Adam die. They that belong to Christ shall live. Now mark this down. Not only Christians will resurrect, but every human being that ever lived, both good and bad, both sinful and righteous, they will all rise to life. But the difference is, those that died in Christ, when they rise up, they will rise up to life, eternal, eternal life. But those that never got into Christ, they will rise up to judgment and punishment. I can see the way you are looking at me. Because of that, let's turn to John chapter number 5. John chapter number 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, verse 25, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man and they that hear shall live. For as the Father has life in himself, so are they given to the Son to have life in himself and have given him authority to execute judgment also because he is a Son of Man. Verse 28. Marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in the which. What? All that are in their grave shall do what? Shall hear his voice. All, all, all. All that are in their graves shall hear his voice. And? And shall? Come forth. Uh huh. They that have done good. To the resurrection of life and they that have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. The choice is yours. Live whichever way you want to live. We know you will die. But there is something we want to tell you. You will also be raised to life. And when you are raised to life, it will either be the resurrection to life or the resurrection to damnation. That is when you will know that it was not a joke, but it will be too late to change. But today, you can change all that. Let me tell you something. When you repent of your sins, when you ask God to forgive you, you don't do me any favor. You don't do nobody no favor. You do yourself a favor. Did you hear what I said? You don't do nobody no favor. Whether that is good English, it really doesn't matter. You know what I mean. You do yourself a favor. Even if you repent privately and talk to God privately and live your changed life privately, although we will see and notice there is a change in you, you will be doing yourself a favor. And you know what? I just washed my hands like Pilate washed his hands. Ningekuwa wewe, ningetubu dhambisangu. Just to put myself in good books with God, I would repent of my sins. If I were you, I would repent of my sins. Quietly, within myself, be happy. The debts are settled. All the evils I ever did. Can you imagine God giving you an opportunity to begin again? Yes, you can begin again. You can begin again. Afresh. And all the things you did from now backwards, they would be forgotten, washed, forgotten, clean, and walk light. Salvation is nice. It gives us an opportunity. Jesus, the first fruit of them that are slept. Back here in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection from the dead. For as in Adam all die, verse 22, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 
but every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits. Afterwards, they that are Christ's at his coming. When Christ returns, Paul says, The trump of God shall sound, for the angel of God shall come with a shout of an archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive, shall be changed in a twinkling of an eye and together and together shall we meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. You see, first century Christians were worried about the dead. 21st century Christians are worried about the living. Christians in the day of Paul were thinking that the dead were disadvantaged and so when Christ was returned, they would not have the privilege of seeing Christ together with them. Today, Christians believe that when people die, they go to heaven. Even this morning, I was doing some research reading about uh, what the resurrection of Jesus means to us today. I was just doing some reading. And one of the things that uh, Christians have written is that uh, when a Christian dies, their spirit is face to face with Christ right now. That's a lie. But that is a subject for another day. We think that the dead have already gone before us and that they are in the presence of God. First century Christians thought that the dead were disadvantaged. And so Paul writing he said that the trump of God will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first. Don't worry about the dead. Do not be dismayed. Writing to, what book is that? First Thessalonians chapter 4. Maybe let's read that and bring this message to a, a close. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse number 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain shall not prevent, shall not precede, shall not go before them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. They shall rise first. Then, then, in other words, after that, we, which will be alive that time, then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together. Are you understanding? There's no one developing their plot in heaven before us. There's no one who has connected electricity before us in heaven. There's no one who has painted their mansion in heaven before us. There is no one who has gone before us. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. See, we caught up together with who? With them. The dead have arisen. The dead have come back to life. The living have been changed. And together, together, caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. My dear brethren, Jesus died. He rose again. We too may die, but we will rise up again. Some of us will rise up to life eternal. Others will rise up to condemnation, to damnation. The choice is yours. I say the choice is yours. There is hope after death. We shall be raised to life. And we shall be given new bodies. Hello? We shall be given new bodies. But these new bodies we shall have they will be in such a way that when I look at you, I can recognize you. But the body that we will receive, although it will look like this same body, it will be different. Different because even though Jesus still had the marks where they pierced him, there was something about him that was different. He could pass through a wall. It could be a hundred miles in the second minute. You are with him here. 
and the next second is with other people elsewhere he could not be in two places at the same time no but he could move very fast chuck he's on the other side and while they had locked themselves in the room because they were afraid jesus appeared inside the room and said peace do not be afraid it is i where did he pass through the wall would you like the privilege of passing through a wall not everyone will have the same capacity of passing through the wall don't imagine that every tom dick and harry after the resur resurrection will be given a body that can pass through the wall don't be deceived because the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of god strive to be one of those immortal sons of god because bad news Shall I share some bad news as I close? Some people will resurrect, but the bodies they will have will be bodies like the one you have. And you will sustain your life through food. But there are others again who in the resurrection will be like angels. Would you like to be an, an angel or would you like to be better than angels? 1 Corinthians 15 is a powerful chapter. You want me to read a scripture or two for you? I've already closed the Bible, but I can open 1 Corinthians 15 and read for you. But someone will ask, with what body shall the dead rise up in? Paul says, you fool. Don't you understand? That which you saw is not that which... Verse 35. I just want to read this as I close. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Isn't that the question you are asking? I will jump Paul's response. That which you saw is not quickened except it die. And, and that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be. But bore grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain, but God giveth it a body as he has pleased to every seed his own. Your life, the life you lead is a seed. How you live for God, it's a seed you are sowing. Now God will give that seed, that life that you have lived, a body that is suitable to that seed. All flesh is not the same flesh, he says. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another flesh of fish, another flesh of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the terrestrial is one, and the glory of the celestial is one, and the body of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. You are stars. The life you lead, shine for God. But understand, all stars don't have the same. Some may come up with the glory of the sun. Others may come up with the glory of the moon. Others will come with the glory of the stars. But even all stars don't have the same glory. Are you getting what we are talking about here? Maybe you don't get. Verse 42 concludes. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in disorder, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. As it is written, first man, Adam was made living, a living soul. The second man, last Adam. In other words... Let's live for God. It's a message of the day. Let us live in newness of life. Let's dedicate our lives to God. Because your life, my life, is a seed that we are sowing. And that seed will receive a special body. Fit. God is not going to give you more marks than you should get. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed and everlasting Father, we thank you. We appreciate you, King of the universe. We thank you for this knowledge that Jesus died for us and he rose up and that we too will be raised to life. Help us, Lord, to walk right, to serve you rightly, and to give our lives as a seed so that, Lord, you may raise us up with new bodies, glorious bodies, immortal bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Sunday.